Welcome to the third lab you will be performing for Physics 185. Today's lab will begin to look in more detail at astronomical measurements, and specifically in today's lab we are going to get a sense of the scale of the universe. This correlates to, to the material you may have covered in chapter one in the text, where you were considering the relative sizes and developing a scale given a standard size for the sun and what the other planets, the closest stars, where they would have to be located on that particular scale to um, represent the solar system and, and nearby stars. Um, today's lab will start with a field of view from a telescope. And the field of view is quite magnified. What you are looking at is you are looking at a view of your home planet. Now, obviously, you're not on your home planet if you're seeing this view. And what you will see is you will see the round disk of the planet, and you will see um, grid lines. If you don't see grid lines, there is an option near the top of the screen that says show grid. If I click on the high grid right now, the grid would go away. This also tells us that the view of the sky is currently 20,000 kilometers across. So what that tells me is it tells me that each one of these squares, there are 10 of these squares on the grid, each one of those squares is worth 2,000 kilometers. To find the radius of the home planet, what I probably would want to do is I'd want to find the diameter, so I count how many squares it takes to go from this edge of the planet. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe about 8.4 squares. Each of those squares is worth 2,000 kilometers. I'd multiply 8.4 times 2,000. That would give me the diameter of the planet. And then I would take that distance, divide by 2, to get the radius. Be very careful that you pay attention to the units that are being asked for in terms of the answers. Make sure if they're asking for kilometers, you put your answer in kilometers. If they're asking for a different value, you put your answer in that particular value. And then we're also trying to get a sense of, of how long it might take to make a particular journey, particularly as we move farther away. And so then you're also asked how many seconds it would take to, for light to travel that distance. To find the time, what you do is you take the distance and you divide by the speed. The speed of light that you would use in this case is 3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second. The more common value for C that you may have heard before is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. A kilometer is a thousand times bigger than a meter, so you'd need a thousand fewer of those to represent that same speed. Once you've entered your two numbers, you will go and click on the check your answers box. If your answers are both correct, you will be told good job and you will see a new field of view. If your answers are incorrect, you will be told that one of your answers is wrong or both of your answers are wrong and you will need to try again. This will continue on through planets in your solar system, through nearby stars, and finally to the overall size of the galaxy. I would say be very careful when you do each of those exercises that you are finding the answer that they are asking you to find. Make sure you find the radius when they ask for the radius, the diameter when they ask for the diameter and then make sure you're using the right units for the speed of light. When you get to the last screen, you will get a congratulations, you have completed everything. In order for you to get credit for the lab, you must do a screenshot of that last screen and make sure you insert it in your lab report. This is a fairly straightforward lab. The one place where you will encounter perhaps a, a unique situation will be when you look at um, the nearby stars. For most of the uh, measurements you will have been made up to then, everything will line up for a grid. For the nearby stars, you may not have that option. So if I can just use this grid as an example, your star might be right here, and the closest star may be here. If the closest star was here, that would be easy because you could just count grid squares. If the closest star is here, it's not on either the x-axis or on the y-axis. So what you can do is you could either do a best estimate and say, well, that appears to be about two squares, or we could actually use a mathematical technique that allows us to determine if we travel this way and travel this way what the actual distance is from that point to the point where we end up. 
You may, may remember it fondly from your high school math class. It's called Pythagorean's Theorem, or you may not remember it fondly. In any case, this is what we'll use for this particular lab. And so what you would do to find the distance is you would just count the number of squares along the x direction and square it, count the number of squares along the y direction and square it, add those two numbers together and take the square root. This would give you the number of grid squares that that distance is equivalent to. And then you, of course, have the scale of the grid because on each of these graphs, you will be told what the field of view is worth. Each of those fields of view will have 10 squares. And so the value of one of those squares will be one tenth of the field of view for that particular sky. Good luck with this lab. Remember, when you get to the last screen, do a screenshot of the congratulations mes message that you will get when you've completed the lab, and make sure to insert that into your lab report. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.